Hey guys, I saw this calendar. I'm trying to find who built it. Uh, Shinichiro Murakami, right? It's a fiscal year calendar and it's, it gave me a really cool idea. Um, basically, it's just a calendar, right? But because it's Tableau, we can overlay some information. So something like uh, if you want to track daily, right? So let's say something where you do have to track daily. Let's say um, like I used to work in a call center. So you want to be like, well, did we meet the target for the day in terms of how many calls or how many responses? Or, you know, maybe you want to do something else. Like, for example, safety. How many safety related issues did we have today? How many injuries did we have today? And instead of um, kind of visualizing over a long term, something like uh let me see let me see let me see so i've got a blank one here so let's say i've let's say we're talking safety incidents we're doing day right so let's see where's my day where's my day so continuous day right and i'm just going to pick a value here let's say quantity right instead of viewing it like this we can instead view it sort of like a traffic light or a heat map right so a different way to look at the data in a structure that a lot of people are already familiar with everyone's seen calendars so let me show you how to build this in Tableau. It's actually remarkably easy. A few little things you have to do here and there, but pretty easy. So let's clear this whole up. I'm just using the Superstore data, right? So whenever trying to replicate someone else's um, visualization or trying to build a visualization just in general, I don't try and build the whole thing at once in my head, right? I always think of everything in terms of little elements, right? So one thing I notice is, I mean, so this is for a given year starting in July. So let's say, let's just assume one year. You've got the weeks here, right? So that's one element. You've got the weeks going this way, right? And then you've got to split it up by month, right? And then you've got some sort of value in inside. So let's say you've got four main elements. And I tend to build one after the other, right? So I don't get confused. So let's go to Tableau right and I'm gonna use order date so let's start with the weeks at the top so I'm gonna right click drag here right and you've got you'll notice you get two weeks right so let's do the first week right oh hang on, hang on, hang on. let me do a fresh one I was testing some stuff there before okay let's do that again let's say I got week right this isn't the one we want because what this is doing is from the very beginning of our data set oh sorry from the start of the year, it marks that week one, week two, week three, all the way up to the end of the year. Not really what we want. The week we want is Monday, Tuesday, right? So we got to switch this from week number to week day, right? So if you get that issue, so that's um, change number one, right? Then we want to see in terms of um, month. So we grab order date again. We're going to drop it into rows, right? We're going to swap this to month now very careful in your data set if you have something that goes over um, a number of years right let's say i do some sort of value in here right some, some sort of value like that i go oh cool we did this much in march because we're doing discrete data let's say it goes over 10 years this is the total amount we've sold on sunday for march for all those 10 years combined so be very careful with the way the hierarchy works. So if I get the order date and I put in front here with year, you'll see it all spread out, right? So be very careful with kind of how you spread that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it just for a single year. So I tend to actually put this in, even if there's a single value, just as I'm building. So I know that this is actually what it's representing. Okay. All right. So we're getting a bit closer. We need to separate this by week now. So we can use that um, thing that we did before, which was order date. We're going to separate this by we week. Okay. So you can see now it's looking more like a calendar, right? Now we don't need this week one, week two, and we can get rid of the sales for the moment. So we can actually hide this. So just go show header, right? So looking more and more like a calendar. Right. And then if you wanted to have the actual days, right, you can go to order date, go into text and just pick day. There you go. All right. So everything starts and ends exactly at the right time. And another change you can make is let's say your week doesn't start on a Sunday for whatever reason. Let's say it starts on a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. So how do you actually change when it starts? Well, if you click on your data source, 
right? I tend to do it from here. I believe you can do it from here as well. Right click, uh, D4, well, maybe not. Um, if you click on sample, uh, basically where your data source is and you go data pro uh, date properties, right? You're gonna see this feature. So you can see, well, when does the week start? So let's say Tuesday, go okay. So you can see this now starts on a Tuesday, all right? Um, I think we can also change the year. So if we go date properties, instead of starting on January, let's say it's July, right? We go okay. I believe we have to actually modify something down here. Oh, hang on. Oh yeah, that's right. So you go order date, you go um, default properties, fiscal year start, and let's say it starts at May, right? I've just taken off that year filter. So you can see how each year now starts at May. So again, another calendar feature you can do. Right, so let me just align this center because that drives me nuts. All right, so let's say you wanted to apply some sort of traffic light system, right? And I'm gonna switch this back because it's hurting my eyes. <laughs> Sunday, let's go January, All right? Okay, and let's order this one back to January. Okay, cool. And let's just filter for that one. All right, so really easy. If you wanted to apply some sort of traffic light system, just really depends on the rules you want. So let's say I'm looking at every time in terms of profit, let's say profit went above, I don't know, $100, right? So we're going to go profit, create, All right? We're going to do the sum of profit. Otherwise, we're going to be doing just the um, individual one, right? So every time it's greater than, let's say, 100, let's call this profit check, right? So basically, whenever you do a formula like this, where you just have a single kind of equal, greater than, less than, the result is going to be what's called a Boolean, a true or false result, okay? Go OK. So now if I put this into color, right, get rid of the text, right, that's your traffic light system. So we can say every time it's greater than great, green or red false okay so those are all our bad days or all our good days we can go a little bit further switch this to shape right and one of the things i like to do that a lot of people like is if you switch this to kpi uh true means good false means bad right you'll have something more like this make it a little bit bigger because it tends to be a little bit small right and you can have your traffic light system Okay. Um, one other thing I'll add before we close this video is whenever I've built something similar to this, sometimes someone will go to me and it's like, well, you know, we really don't want to check if it's $100. Can we make it 120 And the problem is once you've published it to the cloud, you have to download it from the cloud, you have to modify, right? And then you got to send it back. And then next week they go, actually, let's go back to 105 So what I tend to do is I want to add some sort of um, control that lets people do that their own type of analysis to see how things change. Okay, so what I can do is I can go into just anywhere here. I'm going to create a parameter. I'm going to call this the profit um, limit, let's call it. And we're going to do, yeah, just all values. Let's go, you know, $100 at the beginning. All right, um, float. Yeah, that's all fine. We'll leave that there. So now we have a parameter. Let's add this, so go show parameter. Right now, it's not connected to anything. So if I change this to 1,000, nothing happens, right? Because nothing in our visualization is actually connected to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to profit check, go edit, and instead of 100, I'm going to replace this with the parameter. Uh, where's a profit limit, okay? And go OK, All right? So now as we change this, it will change on its own. So whoever's looking at it can do their own analysis. So again, another little feature. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.